hey guys it's me active exploit back again with a new video uh, and in today's video we are going to talk about llmnr poisoning so um llmnr poisoning is an attack which comes under the active directory um category right uh, so if you don't know what is active directory i would actually suggest that you should first understand what exactly active directory is right uh, so if you are uh, performing practical with me in this video, uh, please keep in mind that you should have a Active Directory uh, penetration testing lab set it up on your hypervisor, right? Uh, so without any further ado, let's get started So first of all uh, before starting the practical I wanted you uh, I, I wanted to explain you uh, uh, LLMNR, right? So what is LLMNR? So LLMNR uh, stands for Link Local Multicast Name Resolution, right? And it, it is a component uh, in Windows which is used to identify hosts uh, in a network when DNS fails to do so, right? So uh, in, in a network, if a machine tries to resolve a particular host and DNS fails to do so, the machine will communicate with other machines in the network, right? So it's going to communicate with other machines um, in its own network using the protocol uh, known as LLMNR and ask if anyone knows the particular host. So what? So you, you might be thinking that this is uh, very secure, right? This is very simple and secure. Uh, but I guess you you are wrong at that point That's because this is not secure, right? The key flaw in LLMNR is that it it utilizes a user's username and password hash to communicate which is really really bad So to understand how this attack happens uh, Let's let's uh, have a look at an example in the diagram below, right? so um, the, the here we have our victim machine and the DNS server, right? And the victim machine wants to go to the print server at the at the print server, right? But by mistake uh, types in print server as you can see uh, Now uh, the DNS server does not know where the print server is located, right? So it's it's simply going to respond back that I don't know the print server. Sorry couldn't locate print server, right? so now uh, the victim using LLMNR um, is going to ask in its own network if anyone knows the host print server right and here we have our attacker right so what exactly happens is that an attacker can listen on a network for these kind of LLMNR um, broadcasts um, and respond uh, respond to them right and what attacker uh, in, in this uh, scenario does is that he's going to pretend that he knows the um, host right he knows the particular host and he, he responds back to the victim saying that yes um, I know the host pass me your hash and I'll get you connected to the server and the victim actually passes its password hash to the attacker right and using that password hash um, the attacker can uh, crack that hash and gain uh, initial access to the computer right so this is basically how um, LLMNR poisoning attack happens right so and and uh, uh, the and the tool which attacker uses to listen for uh, these kind of incoming LNMNR broadcasts is responder right uh, like not only responder but there are a, there are a lot of uh, tools available on the internet right so uh, without any further ado we shall now uh, we, sh we shall now get started with the practical right so so uh, before starting the exploitation process um, I wanted to show you all my um, active directory penetration testing lab setup right so uh, the hypervisor which I'm using over here is VMware fusion on my Mac and um, I and I'm running Windows Server 2016 uh, where my domain controller is there and I have my Kali Linux machine running and I have one more Windows 10 machine uh, which is connected to the domain controller right over here uh, but for the sake of this video I'm only running one Windows 10 machine uh, or else if I'm practicing um, active directory penetration testing uh, when I'm not recording I use two machines like this right two Windows 10 machines like this so uh, now let's get started with the exploitation process alright so uh, now the tool which we are going to use um, is responder to listen for any kind of incoming LLMNR broadcasts right so responder should be uh, by default installed on a Kali Linux machine and first of all we shall have a look at the arguments which we can give and the commands which we can run with uh, of responder right 
so for that all you have to do is say responder dash dash help and as you can see we get a couple of commands um, or we can say arguments which we can run uh, with the tool and one of the most argument which we have to specify is the dash i right so the dash i argument means the interface where we want to listen for incoming broad broadcast uh, request right so um for this video i'm going to listen on my eth0 interface for any kind of broadcast request right so uh, all we have to do is type dash i and eth zeros uh, or any other uh, interface where you want to listen for incoming broadcast requests uh, so now let's fire up the tool and let's see this attack in action right so i'm going to clear up my screen and let's say responder dash i eth0 dash rdwv right so over here we get bunch of types um, and first of all let's have a look at the poisoners tab right so uh, uh, under the poisoners tab as you can see we have lnmnr uh, we have netbus name service we have dns and mdns right so you also see that these uh, poisoners are running uh, and currently active so this means that responder is going to listen for um, any kind of broadcast request uh, it can be LNMNR it can be NetBars name service or DNS MDNS right but if uh, any of these um, services are turned off responder is not going to listen for broadcast broadcast requests uh, for the particular service which was turned off right so, um, and we have our servers type uh, where the HTTP server is on the Samba server is on the FTP server is also on uh, and so on right um, so what exactly happens over here is that responder started all of these servers right and responder is going to listen for any kind of broadcast requests on these servers so that we can grab the hash of the target user right now um, uh, if we go to our Windows machine and if we try to connect to the Samba share uh, on our Kali Linux machine you'll see what's going to happen right so let's say 192.168.116.136 and if we go back at our Linux machine Kali Linux machine as you can see we grab hashes of the target computer over here right the hashes of uh, our uh, Windows 10 machine right and as you can see this is really really dangerous uh, LNMNR is not completely secure but now what's next you already grabbed the hash um, uh, you got you got their hashes but now what next so you can store this hash and attempt to crack this hash and get the password right um, but I'm not going to show you that uh, in this video I want you that you should write on your own and the password hash uh, format um, is NTLM version 2 over here as you can see and you, you can um, um, crack this hash uh, using um, hash cat or any other uh, uh, hash cracking tool right but um, it, it depends on the strength of the password if, if the password strength is um, really hard then you, I guess you won't be um, able to crack the hash you, you you can crack the hash but it's going to take some time right it's going to take uh, take a long time but um, if the password is weak uh, we can easily crack the password uh, in minutes right so uh, that's all for this video um, I, I'll meet you guys in the next video right and uh, in, the, in the next video we shall continue with the Windows privilege escalation series and uh, we, we shall cover off uh, network enumeration right so uh, that's all for this video guys I hope you liked it and I'm going to see you in the next video goodbye